2 Timothy chapter 4 is as familiar a portion of Scripture in the New Testament as just about any other. I love it in particular because it was one of the last messages my grandfather ever preached. He preached out of this text. When I preached his funeral, I preached out of this text. And I don't know how many times I've preached out of this text over the years, but it's just as real, just as fruitful, just as wonderful as it was the first time I ever read it. And I just want to look at a couple things here. Let me, let me clarify this. I not only believe that the Bible is the Word of God, I believe every word in the Bible is the Word of God. I believe the punctuation in the Bible is of God. I believe all of it is God's Word, and it is given to us that the man of God might be Truly furnish unto good works, and I believe the Bible. I believe every bit of it. Uh, there's a lot of people say they believe the Bible, but there are certain things in the Bible they don't agree with. Well, you don't believe the Bible. You know, I don't need uh, somebody to correct the Bible for me. I believe God said what He meant, meant what He said, and uh, I don't need the Bible to line up with me. I need me to line up with the Bible. And tonight I just want to do a little word study after I get through the introduction. It's just a word that uh, I want to deal with because uh, uh, and you'll see when we get to it why uh, because there's a lot of people who's got the wrong idea about some things all right but uh, in 2nd Timothy chapter 4 the Bible says verse number 1 and this is the great Apostle Paul he's just uh, fulfilled his duty to God in his calling he's about ready to check off uh, check out the scene and go off into glory and he's reminding young Timothy, a young pastor, a man that he had won to the Lord, his son in the faith, he's reminding him a few final things before he goes to meet the Lord. Now notice what he says in verse number 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the wonderful testimonies, the wonderful singing. Thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God tonight. Lord, we could leave right now and say it was good to be here. Lord, we thank you for the scriptures, the precious promises of the Word of God. And I pray now, Lord, you'd help us. Lord, you would uh, uh, increase our faith. Will you give us a greater zeal for thee and for thy truth? And God, would you help us to be better witnesses? Lord, uh, testimony after testimony talked about folks in this world that's in a mess and God, you left us here to be a light to them, uh, to let them know they can have a better life, and that life is found in Christ. Uh, Father, I pray you'd use every individual here for your honor and for your glory. And I certainly pray there be any amongst us tonight unsaved, lost without Christ, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Bless thy people. Get glory to your name. Use this unworthy vessel one more time. We appreciate you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we ask it all. Amen and amen. In this wonderful chapter, uh, and man, there's a lot of preaching here. We could be here all night, but we're not. I'm going to try and stick with the thought. But notice, if you will, the directive in verse number 2. We find that Paul tells Timothy, preach the word. He didn't say preach philosophy. Didn't say preach what was popular. Didn't say preach uh, what they wanted to hear. He said, preach the word, be instant in season, 
out of season. That means always be ready to preach the word when they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. When it's convenient, when it's not convenient. Preach the word. Uh, says reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, means sometimes uh, uh, you got to reprove them. You got to remind them and let them know they're headed the right way. Sometimes you got to rebuke them. Uh, tell them, hey, you're not doing things the right way. Uh, and then you're to exhort them. You've got to constantly be urging them, exhorting them uh, uh, to live for Christ and do it with all long suffering and doctrine. We live in a day and age where doctrine is a dirty word. That's because people that don't like doctrine don't understand doctrine. You say, what is doctrine? The Bible. The study of the Bible. What God says. See, what people say when they say they don't want doctrine, what they say is they don't want the Word of God to convict them. What they say is they want to live however they want to live and have no recourse for how they live. Friends, there's always consequences for our choices. And we're to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with long-suffering and doctrine uh, so that we know what God said, so we know what is required of us, uh, so we know that if we obey, we'll be blessed. If we disobey, we're going to be judged by God. So we find that He is directed to do all those things in verse number 2. Notice not only the directive, but notice Paul lets him know there are going to be some disappointments. Hmm? You'd think if somebody sat under preaching, heard preaching, they'd love preaching and they'd just want more preaching. Yeah. But uh, let me help you with something. Some people don't come for preaching. Amen. Some people come to ease their conscience that they went to church. Some people come because they just want to fit in somewhere. Some people come because they know something's missing in their life and uh, when they get here they see everybody's friendly and lovely and, and they love one another and they say, this is it. But when they start listening, they find that their life don't line up with it. They don't like it. And then some people will find out, do exactly what the text says. Look what he says in verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Do you ever wonder why there's so many different denominations? Because they didn't endure sound doctrine. You know, we're preaching the same thing the apostles preached. Hmm? We preach the same thing Jesus preached. This hasn't changed. What has changed? Man's ideals of this. Can I say there's over 40 different Baptist faiths? Hmm? Used to, if you told somebody you was a Baptist, they knew what you believed, but not anymore. He said, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want this book. But after their own lusts, how they heap to themselves teachers uh, having itching ears, uh, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. It amazes me what some people believe just amazes me how that the truth wasn't good enough and so they'll believe something that just makes their flesh feel good or something that doesn't challenge them to be better than what they are hmm? can I say there's all kinds of people that believe a watered down gospel there's all kinds of people that believe, you know, they buy Joe Osteen's book, something good's going to happen to you today, and they believe that. There's all kinds of people that believe uh, uh, this name it and claim it stuff where if uh, uh, you plant a seed, God's going to plant you an orchard. You give somebody a thousand bucks, God's going to make you a millionaire. And they believe that junk. Huh? P.T. Barnum said there's a sucker born every minute. Hmm? And there are people that believe false doctrine, but they won't believe the truth. Mm -mm. Can I say there are people that believe that a preacher shouldn't preach with notes? That you're to stand up and God poured on you like He poured it on Peter in the day of Pentecost. Do you realize that God had been preparing Peter for that message for three and a half years? Amen. But the same people say that a preacher shouldn't preach with notes, they use a songbook when they sing. Why don't you just stand there and open up your mouth and let God pour a song in you? 
You know, the Bible says God's not the author of confusion. People that believe a preacher shouldn't preach with notes, they do not want to study. They do not want to be accountable. They do not want to sit in here and dig what, uh, what the Bible says. It's just like people believe in a general judgment, general resurrection. They believe one day the Lord's coming, it's going to be in. They don't understand there's going to be a great tribulation period for seven years. They don't believe there's going to be a millennial reign of Christ for a thousand years on this earth. They do not believe in the teachings of the Bible because they will not let somebody unfold the Bible and show them the truth. Hmm? Can I say it's easy to be lazy? And it's very easy to cling to what grandma believed and what grandpa believed. It amazes me. People say, well, my grandma believed this and grandma couldn't even read. What's the Bible say? We're to rightly divide the word of truth, my dear friends. Study the Bible, huh? My dear friends, a lot of folks don't. I mean, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Can I say, to study the Bible takes work. Can I say, rightly dividing the scriptures take work. In order for something to be a doctrine from God, it needs to be written in the same place, in the same context, at least two or three times, because under the, the law, uh, uh, there had to be two or three witnesses in order for a thing to be established. Uh, same thing with doctrine. Uh, uh, so uh, I can't uh, just run to Matthew chapter 24 and say, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Uh, that means you can hold on and work for your salvation. Uh, Matthew 24 is not even written to the church. It's written to the Jews. Uh, but people who do not rightly divide the Bible will be confused. Uh, Amen. And what happens a lot of times, Brother Brian, they gravitate to somebody that tells them what they want to hear. And people that serve the Lord in truth can be disappointed. There's a lot of people that have left the truth. Mm, of course, the Lord told us if they would have been of us, they would not have left us. Amen. Paul's given Timothy a directive. He lets Timothy know there will be disappointment. He also urges Timothy to have the right defense. Look in verse number 5. I'm not even preaching. Some of you are already upset. Verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things... Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Paul lets Timothy know this very important word. He says, watch. But watch thou in all things. That word watch means to guard against. There are some things you have to guard against, and one of those things is you have to guard against letting your personal feelings and opinions to be hurt. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. We fight spiritual wickedness in high places. And he says the way to guard against the disappointment, he says, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Paul also wrote that we need to be good soldiers and endure afflictions, uh, endure problems. Uh, uh, listen, not everything's going to be rosy. God never promised us a rose garden. He just promised to be the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Uh, he said uh, uh, you have to endure some things. Uh, sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to be in the nasty now and now. Sometimes uh, things aren't going to go the way you hope they go. Just stay Stick with it is what he's telling him. Endure afflictions. And then he says uh, 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 to do the work of an evangelist. What does that mean? That means win people to God. Evangelize sinners. Tell them Jesus loves them. How do you think the church has reproduced itself in the perpetuity of the church, the church and that doctrine has been established? Uh, 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 if the church uh, wouldn't have been telling folks about Jesus, there'd never been a second century church. Uh, we'd have never had the church. Uh, hey, the reason uh, 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 God's still doing the work is folks are still telling sinners about Jesus. Uh, and the best way to uh, endure affliction, the best way to defend against uh, those that are heaped to themselves, teachers having itching ears, uh, go out there and find some folks that want to know the truth, tell them about Jesus, uh, and let God save them from their sin. Uh, 
And then he says, make full proof of thy ministry. Huh? Now, we don't have time to go in it, into all of it, but, you know, we could talk to Brother Ron. I, I can guarantee you, tell you he's been lied on and being a preacher. Huh? We can talk to Brother Adrian. He'd tell you he's been lied on being a preacher. Huh? Brother Josh hadn't been preaching a whole lot of time, but I guarantee he's been lied on being a preacher. Huh? Brother Phil, we just lie about you. But anyway, listen, the best way to silence your critics is you just stay faithful. Hmm? Just keep on keeping on. I should have brought that poem out. Miss Dawn wrote me so many years ago. Zachary was little. She sure wrote me a poem. Said, keep on keeping on. I got out and read it the other day. I was preaching revival in Georgia and read it down there, and a guy put it to music. Uh, but the best way to silence all the naysayers is just stay faithful and true. You know, what are they going to say? Well, he's a crook, but he's still being faithful. Huh? Amen. Now, notice, if you will, also the dissonance or the conclusion that Paul lays out before Timothy. He says in verse number 6, For I am now ready to be offered, the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also unto all them also that love is appearing. We find the great apostle Paul's epitaph right there, his own personal testimony, what's going to happen. Now can I say through the years, God doesn't always know. He, let his children know when it's about time to cross over, but I will say any time I've ever been around somebody's about ready to cross over that's been saved, God gives them dying grace. And can I say the Apostle Paul had such a relationship with the Lord, the Lord let him know exactly what was coming. Um, but can I say, notice if you will what Paul has to say in his conclusion. First he tells us, verse 7, he said, I fought a good fight. You know what Paul's saying? Paul's saying, I didn't change. What I always was, I still am. I fought a good fight. He didn't say I won every fight. He didn't say I, I come out of this thing unbruised. Matter of, fact, he, matter of fact, he said he was in a fight. Huh? We know he had a thorn in the flesh. We know the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. We know that he was beaten on several occasions. We know he was stoned. We know he was left for dead. We know that the Apostle Paul endured more than any of us or all of us put together will ever endure. But he said, I fought a good fight. He said, through it all, I didn't change. Notice what else he said. He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Hmm? Notice he said, I didn't compromise. I didn't change. I didn't compromise. I finished my course. I ran my race. Hmm? He didn't say, I won the race. He said, I finished my race. You know what the Lord's looking for? He's not looking for people who want to be first in this thing. He's looking for folks that just want to finish. Amen. You ought to have a burden to finish right, not compromise. Too many have compromised. Too many are jumping ship. Too many of them uh, 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 aren't concerned about uh, uh, what uh, the world really thinks of their testimony. Yeah. You ought to have something deep down inside of you that says, I'm going to fight a good fight, and I'm going to finish by the grace of God. Hmm? And then we find that he says... I have kept the faith. He said, I continued on. I didn't let things that should have made me quit cause me to quit. I just kept the faith. I just believe God's going to do what he said he did. As a matter of fact, Paul wrote, he said, I'm, I'm fully persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Paul had faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. He said, I kept the faith. He not only had faith in God, but he kept the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And he, he pinned it down as God told him to, and he left us the faith. We have that very same faith. I'm glad for faith, and I'm glad for the faith. He said, I kept the faith. That word kept means he kept it intact. He didn't let it intermingle with things. He kept it intact. It was pure. Can I say it? He, he, that word kept says he kept it in order. He didn't let it become disorderly. And can I say it also means kept, he kept it in motion. He kept it going. Hmm? God help us to keep the faith. Huh? I'm interested in verse number 6. There's a word here I'm interested in. 
He said, for I am now ready. Let me ask you, are you ready to go? Amen. <laughs> Say, oh yeah, I want to go to heaven. That's not what I ask you. I ask you, are you ready to go? Because you know, long before we see streets of gold and mansions over on the hilltop and walls of jasper and gates of pearl and the twelve beautiful foundations, long before we ever see New Jerusalem, there's a place uh, called the judgment seat of Christ where every one of us uh, must give an account of the deeds done in our body, whether they were good or whether they were evil. Uh, my dear friends, we've got an appointment with, with Jesus first. Are you ready? I want to tell you something. I have a hard time getting excited about streets of gold knowing I'm going to have to appear before him. Amen. We're going to have to give an account of every time the Holy Spirit convicted us to do something or told us to do something and we didn't. We're going to have to give an account of every time the Lord told us to invite somebody to church and we didn't. We're going to have to give an account of every time the Lord told us you need to stop and pray and we didn't. We're going to give an account of how much we or how little we gave in attendance to the Word of God, how much or how little we gave in attendance to the house of God, how we have uh, used those things God has prospered us with for God's glory. We're going to have to give an account of a whole lot of things. Amen. I used to have an idea. I don't anymore because I'm getting old, but in 36 years of preaching, I have well over 15,000 messages I have put together. You know I'm going to give an account of every one of them. Uh, don't look at me too sad. You're going to give an account of the ones that would use a member of the church. When If you didn't come to church, you're going to give an account of the message whether you sat here or not. Because right. God said for us to be faithful. Moreover, in stewards, it's required that a man be found faithful. The Bible told us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Now, there are times we are providentially hindered, but we're still accountable for what God did in the service. Amen. Mm, that went over real good. Let me ask you again, are you ready? Amen. Paul says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I'm interested where he said, The time of my departure is at hand. I'm really interested in that word, departure and this is what I want to preach on I want to preach on this thought I want to preach on the right time to depart there's a lot of people in their mind they think they get to a certain point in their life that they don't have to give as much to God as they once did I know of men who are quitting the ministry in droves matter of fact the last statistic that I read is every month some 1,500 churches close in America. I have read that somewhere in every month, 6,500 men quit the ministry. That's not counting how many laypersons, for lack of better terms, folks that are just faithful church members, decide they're not going to be as faithful to church. Hmm. And we have the mindset that God's okay with it. Now, Paul said he fought a good fight, he finished my course, he kept the faith. But right before that, he said, the time of my departure is at hand. He didn't have the right time to depart if he hadn't done all that other stuff right. But there are people that have the ideal that, hey, I'm ready to go to heaven. And when Christians speak of going to heaven or they speak of departing and going to that wonderful paradise the Lord has set in store for us, what they are really saying is that I am ready to escape my problems. I want to go to heaven so all my problems go away. Just listen to what they talk about. They talk, woe is me, i got all these problems, and when I get to go to heaven I won't have any problems anymore. So their time of their departure is centered around escaping their problems. Can I say other people, when they speak of going to heaven, they speak of it that they can exterminate their debts. That word departure not only has the thought process of a boat pulling up anchor and sailing away, it also has the thought process of those on the battlefield when the battle is over. Now, I never fought for our country. It's one of the 
things I regret, but can I say I appreciate all those that did? Amen. And listen, I have talked and known men uh, who've been in the heat of the battle. Uh, there's some that never really got into a battle. Uh, but I know of some that have. Uh, and I can't imagine uh, uh, the release uh, and the relief uh, to hear that the battle is over uh, and they get to go home. Uh, listen, we're in the battle for the good and the right. Uh, we're here uh, uh, to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, uh, we are fighting uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, we are uh, uh, fighting uh, 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 weapon, uh, with weapons that we don't even understand. Uh, but there's a coming of day uh, when the battle will be over. Uh, and the victory sound uh, trumpet will be sounded uh, there'll be a day when the battle's over and we get to go home uh, what a blessing can I say that thought is those on the battlefield it's time to pull up stakes and head for home can I say don't drive your stakes too deep in this old world because it's about time to pull them up and head home now, I've seen those pictures, and you have two of troops that had them little white cotton linen tents, just had little stakes, and they'd pop them up and go on down the battlefield. Hey, there's coming today we're popping them stakes up, and we're going home, huh? And by the way, I read this. I kind of liked it. The most important task of a soldier is to accomplish his mission. Amen. Hmm? Uh, God gave us a mission. You say, what is our mission? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's the great commission of the church. And we're to be faithful to that mission until the Lord calls us out of the battlefield. What a blessing. We need to accomplish our mission. Hmm? Are you ready? Hmm? Have you been accomplishing the mission? Hmm? That, that word departure has a a final connotation, a final meeting. Not only means a boat pulling up anchor and sailing away or being on the battlefield and the battlefield's over and pull up the stakes and head for home, but it also means, that word departure, laying down a heavy burden and moving on. Now can I say, if you serve the Lord, there are times you'll have a heavy burden. You'll have a burden to see family get right with the Lord. You'll have a burden to see sinners come to Christ. You'll have a burden to see the Lord's church in revival. You'll have a burden to see folks uh, set free from those things that are holding them back. You'll have a burden. You'll have the burden of the Lord. You'll want to see righteousness and peace and grace in the lives, flourishing of people all around you. Can I say there's coming a day we're going to lay down our heavy burden. One writer said the greatest burdens have no burden. In the Laodicean church age that we live in, there's a lot of folks that just have no burden for God. I don't know about you, but that burdens me that people don't have a burden to do anything for God. I'm glad I'm part of a church that has a burden to see people saved. I'm glad I'm part of a church that has a burden to support missionaries. I'm glad I'm in a burden that wants a constant or a church that's constantly got a burden to start new ministries to get the gospel out. What a blessing. I'm glad I in a church that has a burden for our young people. Got a burden. What a blessing. But there's coming a day. We'll lay these burdens down. And we'll go on to glory. We'll depart from them. Now listen. Paul said, For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. When we think of departure, it's not about escaping or exterminating or ending things we think about departure, it's about going home. Now listen, until the Lord calls us, we're to stay in the boat, we're to keep on the battlefield, and we're to continue carrying the burden. And as Miss Veronica and Brother Clint sang this morning, heaven's almost in view, friend. Huh? Just stick by the stuff. Just keep fighting a good fight. Just finish your course. Just keep the faith. And when it is your time to depart, you'll be ready. And listen, you'll hear one of those, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter in into the joy of the Lord. Preached several years ago on well done or done for.
I don't want a done for. I want a well done. And the only way to get one of those is just stay with it till Jesus comes. Quit thinking about and looking for the departure and start thinking and looking for the departed, those that need Jesus. And when Jesus comes, oh, it'll be so much better for you and I when we've been focused on what He's focused on, people being ready to meet Him. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, if you'll come get a song. Maybe you need to come get ready to depart. Maybe tonight the Lord spoke to your heart about something that He's not pleased with. Maybe tonight you just need to come and thank Him that you're in the right ship, headed in the right direction. I don't know. If God spoke to your heart, the altar's open. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the goodness of God. Lord, I understand when people say they want to go to heaven so they can get out of all the misery and all the woe of this old world. I understand that, Lord. We just get so tired of seeing all the wickedness and the sin. We get so tired of hearing your name defamed. Lord, we just want to go home. But Lord, help us to realize we're not going home until, Lord, that final one gets saved. Or until that final task is accomplished. And help us to stay true to the things of God until it's time for us to depart. God, put something in us that is much more stable than just little superficial things. And help us, Lord, to have the gumption that the Apostle Paul had. Oh, God, help us to live as unto Christ and to be ready when you call us home. Bless now in this invitation. God, have your will and way in every heart. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.